So I was listening to Make It Make Sense. Shout out to Make It Make Sense. Thank make you. Make It for- Make Sense to me intellectually. Make It Make Sense. <laughs> make It Make Sense. You know what was up. I ain't got it. <laughs> Big Mims. Surfer. Make it make sense, tell me how you squeeze it. Just make it make sense. Tell me about the things that you say. Just make it make sense. Tell me about the things in your dream. Hey, let me work out all the things in between. Make it make sense. Tell me how you squeeze it. Just make it make sense. Tell me about the things that you say. Just make it make sense. Tell me about the things in your dream. Hey, let me work out all the things in between. Make it make sense. Swallowed up, swallowed up, swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed up? <laughs> no. My bad, I'm sorry. My bad. Okay, I don't know. My mic is working. I don't know what happened there, but um, if you can hear me now, I think we're good. Let <laughs> We have to do our black history moment, so we're going to start here. When I was finally served at that counter, I thought it was by far one of the lousiest meals I ever had. And I asked myself the question, is this what I put my life on the line for? <laughs> I love him. <laughs> uh, as you know, he was one of the people who said they were not going to get up from the counter. Because of people like that gentleman we just saw, the world changed. So shout out to him. And also shout out to him for eating that nasty potato salad because he knew what he had to do to make sure that things were better for us. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know if we should start. The YouTube streets are in shambles. I low-key want to start with... I low-key want to start with T.D. Jake's but something else has popped up recently, and I think we'll start here. Um, if you don't know, I've been following the Shirley Strawberry and Ernesto saga. Um, if you're new to my channel, Shirley Strawberry's husband is nasty. He's trash. He's everything you can think that you don't want to be. Just as I thought, trash. Um, well, there are other, there are a lot of other content creators who are following this story. One of them is a content creator, um, named infamous Sylvia. Now I've been aware of infamous, infamous Sylvia for a while. Um, as far as I knew her channel, she did a lot of like prayers and stuff like that. Uh, very early on, I would go over there. Um, and sometimes she would pray for me. Uh, she's now in jail. She was granted a bond. Like things are getting you. The streets, the YouTube streets are on fire. Um, apparently there was some outstanding warrants. Infamous Sylvia, if you follow her, um, ever since the Cardi B case, if there is something going on in Atlanta, you will see her in the courtroom. Or well, apparently she had warrants, and while she was basically there to, you know. I guess, court report on what was going on, she became part of the story. In addition, um, people have been hitting me up, letting me know that she went and visited Ernesto. Now, I don't really know what that's about, you know, whether she, you know, prayed for him or what. But the thing is, any new content creator, you want to strive not to become the story. You want to report the story but you want to not become the story. There's been people that I've interviewed that I've had to keep, you know, at a distance because I'm not the story. I'm just interviewing you. Um, but yes, it's re- um, hopefully she does get out soon. Um, according to Dennis Byron, who I, apparently they are beefing. Dennis Byron is a longstanding, like actual journalist who I thought was really cool with her, but I guess that's out the door. Y'all don't let YouTube beef get you locked up, basically. Don't let YouTube beef get you locked up. Apparently, uh, allegedly, part of the reason that she is locked up is due to another um, content creator. This is some crazy shit. 
Like, this is... Uh, don't do it. Don't do it. So I, I hope that infamously gets out. Um, she's always been a very nice lady to me. I don't know the ins and outs. I haven't, you know, I don't really keep up with everything that goes on. Um, but this is, don't get locked up. And don't let beef get you locked up at that. But let's get in, let's get into TD Jakes. Y'all, I have been deep diving on Larry Reed, Tasha K, TD Jakes, Manasa, Vincent Hill, all these people. Um, it's a hell of a lot. It's a hell of a lot, y'all. But we all know what started this. It was Diddy. Well, Diddy, you gave me the Ooskash Goosmash. You gave me the Ooskash Muaf, the Smoosmash. Diddy. Yeah, son. I mean. I mean, you gave me the Ooskash Muash. I love Mm. It was Diddy. Diddy's what started all this. Then Jake's got into it. He's he stepped in it, going to Diddy's party. And well, I will let um this content creator, I've been watching his videos recently. He's absolutely hilarious. He's also a member of the straight shooters. He had his own take of what happened with T.D. Jakes. When I heard this live, y'all, I'm telling you, I fell out the bed. You know, uh, 40 more likes needed. Okay, thank you, Curtis. I appreciate y'all. Uh, I wasn't going to cover this uh, till Larry responded, okay? I wasn't going to cover the T.D. Jakes power bottom story till he responded. You know, I, I was like, when, when it all came out with the T.D. Jakes situation, um, it was birthed out of Pup Daddy and Cassie. And then that was okay, we were good to go with that. But then they start talking about um Victor Jakes was bent over on a motorcycle with a peach cobbler. Then they talk about, yeah, he was uh he used canned peaches, he didn't even use French peaches. He had a thong on, and you know, and he was bent over the motorcycle with a peach cobbler, and you can see the peach cans in the background. I'm like, girl, he didn't even use French peaches. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> most of the people are going to stop following Larry because of this <laughs> grown men type most of are not okay grown men relationships okay okay uh then everybody talk about oh I saw the peach cans uh the people that saw the um the people that saw the the the, the photo yeah I saw it was that even it wasn't even real peaches <laughs> and then they said Bishop Jakes had the peach cobbler on a towel, cooling it off on the counter. He had it on the towel, and it was cooling off on the counter. And you could see the peach cans in the trash can. <laughs> Y'all, these people are sick. <laughs> these are some sick ass people we're dealing with here. Uh, someone told. Me. I told okay, I told y'all this one was gonna be a little messy. Go ahead if you're getting a laugh, hit the like button, <laughs> hit the like button. Uh <laughs> uh D Nurse, thank you so much uh for joining the membership. <laughs> I appreciate you. And Beatrice says, Man, you wrong for that. He was wrong for that, but it was mad funny. I'm not gonna lie. I, I needed a laugh that night. Uh so yeah, shout out to the Thai East report. <laughs> That was his that was his uh play by play, but okay, let's get serious. Uh, we got like 1500 in the chat, y'all. Definitely hit that like button. Um, so TD Jakes, as we all know, he responded to a letter that a content creator had gotten, an anonymous letter that stated just what Thais said that TD Jakes was bent over on a motorcycle. Uh, holding a peach cobbler, uh, even though he hadn't made it from scratch, the dough was Pillsbury and the peaches was canned. That basically in a nutshell. And so my question was always, why is he responding? This would be one of those things where whatever you say can be used against you in the court of public opinion. Now, I know why. It has everything to do with this billion dollars. So let me show you. Ooh, TD. I've been listening to TD Jakes kind of explain what it is, but I still don't like it. 
Um, so it said inside TG Jake's $1 billion partnership with Wells Fargo. Um, TG Jake's estimated he needed $100 million to start a foundation to help solve sociological issues such as food deserts where people live more than 10 miles from grocery stores that sell fresh fruit. All these things are great. All these things are great, but it's the partnership with Wells Fargo that is a little problematic. But let me give you more insight. Um, blah, 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 blah. He said, I'm not normal. I stepped out on faith and swallowed it up. No. <laughs> uh, um, Jake's faith further revealed itself in the form of financial commitment from Wells Fargo. He and the bank announced the $9 million grant to further the work to revital revitalize forgotten communities, especially black and brown communities. As part of the announcement, the party said they earmarked 500000 of the funds to Augusta, Georgia's Laney Walker neighborhood, where they can build a much-needed grocery store. It's all part of the Jake's bigger collaboration with Wells Fargo. Last year, T.G. Jake's foundation um, announced a $1 billion investment to refurbish underserved areas, building on the work already started by Jake's four years ago. Jake's wants to create more financial literacy programs and eradicate payday loan businesses preying on poorer neighborhoods. Here's my problem with that. All these things sound great. I'm acutely aware of the food deserts. Imagine you don't have a car. Imagine anything where you can't actually just get to a grocery store. You are partnering with Wells Fargo, who they don't believe in truth and lending, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, let me see if I can, if I have it up here. Here we go. Regulators caught Wells Fargo and other banks in probe over mortgage pricing discrimination. Wells, Fargo's rece Wells Fargo received an official notice from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau on problems with its use of mortgage rate discounts. Um, let's see. Black and female borrowers got fewer pricing exceptions than other customers. Um, blah, 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 blah. In 2012, it paid more than $184 million to settle federal claims that it charged minorities higher fees and unjustly put them in subprime loans. It was fined $250 million in 2021 for failing to address the problems in its mortgage business, and more recently, it paid $3.7 billion for consumer abuses on products including, including home loans. Basically, if you were Black and you were trying to use Wells Fargo, which was the biggest lender at one point, you were basically screwed. They were repossessing people's cars. They were misapplying their mortgage payments. So what do you do, Wells Fargo, when this happens? You go and you get America's pastor. And you team up with him. The problem that I have with this is there definitely should be a separation between church and state. However, this is under T.D. Jake's own personal business. But he's leveraging him being America's pastor to actually, how would I say this? Reinvigorate interest in Wells Fargo, who technically don't give a F about us. He's basically outsourcing his name and his good name in order to secure this deal. I went through the Forbes article. I went through listening to his he interview with Forbes. He did. He's done multiple interviews because this was announced last year, but it's actually set in motion now. Y'all, if I tell you what was missing from this article, what was missing from the article was how much he stands to profit. Very interesting, right? So oh, to be a little messy. I don't know if you guys follow um, any of the Bravo housewives, but there was a housewife named Mary from Salt Lake City. Her cousin came on to a platform and said that what Mary and her family had been doing for years was convincing church people, their parishioners, to go and get housing through them. And then if something didn't happen correctly, they did not pay on time, they were seizing the homes and selling them. That's what he alleged made them the money. Here in this situation, I don't think T.D. Jakes would be doing that. But do I think that he is leveraging his name as America's pastor in order to get people to come back into the fold with Wells Fargo? Yes. And how much he will make 
if everything is if everything goes through as planned, we don't know. But what we do know is you have a million dollar a billion dollar deal on the table. And your association with Puff Daddy is in question. And now, bent over the motorcycle with a peach cobbler, and you can see the peach cans in the back. I'm like, girl, he didn't even use French speeches. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it now? Are you understanding why he got on that pulpit and did that swallowed up sermon? You are, I believe Wells Fargo has a new CEO. So what the, what the new CEO basically said was, we are reestablishing ourselves as a different brand. So despite all the other stuff that's come out about his son-in-law having been, you know, inappropriate, convicted of being inappropriate with their adopted daughter, and then the allegations that his daughter stole a baby, all those things are not necessarily directly tied to T.D. Jakes. Up until this point, you really didn't hear anything about T.D. Jakes other than, you know, his work with the Potter House and all of his, you know, smart business investments. He's definitely financial, financially savvy. But now you got him bent over on a motorcycle with some canned peach cobbler. Makes you think, right? Now, do I think that this deal could benefit neighborhoods in need? Absolutely. Although I, I joke and I play, you know, we need more people to take an active role in serving underserved communities. You guys know how we do around here. We as, we as a whole have helped a lot of people from content creators, just the people that are in need, only because it's the right thing to do. But this shit, this is see-through. Wells Fargo is using the hell out of this man, and we don't know how much he's going to make as a result. And what will be happening is he will be asking the people, the investors, because he's actually going to be doing the projects, and they're going to be financing it and doing all the loans. He's going to be outsourcing his name his good name up until all this stuff came out with Diddy, he's going to be outsourcing his name to Wells Fargo and he's going to want his people backing him. And he will have some big, big supporters. He's going to have Tyler Perry, who he has already partnered with on a really large amount of land, very close to Tyler Perry Studios. Y'all, we got 2300 in the chat. Definitely hit that like button. We're not even to the mess yet. We have figured out why this man responded to the bottom rumors. Most of the people are going to stop following Larry because of this. Grown men type. Most of are not. Okay. Grown men relationships. Okay. Okay. Uh, then everybody talk about, oh, I saw the peach cans. Uh, the people that saw the um the people that saw the the the, the photo. Yeah, I saw it was not even it wasn't even real peaches. And then they said Bishop Jakes had the peach cobbler on a towel. Cooling it off on the counter. He had it on the towel and it was cooling off on the counter. And you can see the peach cans in the trash can. Y'all, these people are sick. <laughs> these are some sick ass people. We <laughs> um oh, what's up, Aaron? Thank you. Uh, I guess my gift is gonna be in the mail. <laughs> uh okay, so y'all. I have been avoid. Okay, when the Larry Reed stuff hit, and this guy came out and did basically his tell-all, his expose, Vincent. I'm not a big proponent for outing people. It's just not my thing. So him outing Larry, that's his personal business. But all the other people in there, I didn't really want. I didn't really find that to be cool, to be honest with you. Especially people he did not have any direct sexual relationship with. Um, no, I'm an Aquarius, Riri. Well, the shit hit the fan because Larry Reed responded to it. 
And I watched Larry Reed in real time. I was thinking that he might talk about maybe a lawsuit. He didn't. Um, it was a lot. It was a hell of a lot. But since then, with all these YouTube street fires, Larry Reed is now what I would consider hemorrhaging. Um, has he lost any subscribers? No. Has, has he lost anybody on his Patreon? I highly doubt it. Because Larry has what, what YouTubers want. And that's called a actual, it's not a fan base, but it's more of a community that he's built. His subscribers feel like they know him. So there's not really much that you could tell them that would deter them from Larry Reed. So <laughs> after Buddha or Vincent um, gave his his part then larry responded then conscious tv came on the offense against buddha if you don't know conscious tv is um oh he oh are you saying i lost you in the story or you're saying larry reed lost you let me know um but anyway what i got from it is larry is more open to talking about those things so i went ahead and i reported on the story however Tasha K has now upped the ante again. Larry had multiple people going around saying that um, they were in relationships with him all at the same time. What I have gathered from this situation is, let, oh, sorry, let me start here. Larry Reed dipped his toe in the T.D. Jakes drama. Um, Larry Reed is close family friends with Prophet Manasseh who alleged that T.D. Jakes had groomed him. So Prophet Manasseh and Larry Reed got together and started exposing, started exposing um, basically T.D. Jakes and alleging that they are going, or Prophet Manasseh will be suing him for the grooming and stuff like that. We've not since heard anything other than there are multiple alleged victims who've come forward. That's the background. This guy um, already did an interview where he basically said that he worked for Larry Reed for, I don't know, was it like a year or less? And in that time, they were in some form of a relationship. The problem with his story was at one point he said he was groomed, but then on the other part, he said that he knew how to work the system. I don't know what it is. To be honest with you, I always feel like when it's two consenting adults, there's not really a story there until you start using the word grooming. But when I was listening to it, maybe Tasha will get him to expound further because I didn't hear grooming. I heard what I believe to be more like a user and UZ relationship. It's a mess. Um, I'm not playing this because Tasha K, she didn't strike my channel, but um, all of Tasha K's content is copywritten. So if you play it, whether she sees your video or not, YouTube will be notified that you played copyrighted content. So I'm not playing it. Um, she, she'll have it on her app. It's a lot. Let's get back to Larry and Buddha. I got a lot of follow-up questions about whether I believed this man when he was speaking. Yes, I did. Um... But I don't think that the needle has moved as far as people think. Uh, as far as I understand, and Conscious could correct me if I'm wrong, Conscious feels like this is just a you know disgruntled employee slash scorned lover. I wouldn't disagree. I wouldn't. However, do I believe him? Yes. Does who Larry Reed sleeps with affect anybody? In my opinion, no, if the if everybody's a consenting adult, this is where it gets tricky. Buddha started saying that Larry was stealing from people. Now he hasn't shown any proof of that so far, but that was the allegation and the allegation as it pertained to Larry Reed's children that I took the most umbrage with. Um, not scorn lovers give the best tea. <laughs> <laughs> I believe Buddha. 
Um, I would be interested to see what other proof he has. And I'm also interested as to why Larry isn't suing him because what Buddha attempted to do was affect Larry's bottom line. Was that a poor choice of words? My bad. <laughs> was that a, um, let me give you, uh, in a nutshell, hold on. I've got some super chats. Um, booty, oh, booty butter says the canned peach juice was lube. <laughs> oh my God. Again, booty butter says enema mudslide peaches. That sounds gross. Uh, thanks for the super chats, booty butter. The did not show said Tyrese report has harassed me. Um, I don't know what to say to that. Um, have you gone to the authorities? Um, Negla says, Mims, please quit showing that pic of him with his tongue out. Every time you do that or mention peach cobbler and motorcycles, I cry. Well, my bad, because it's gonna get it's gonna get done today. <laughs> uh, thanks for the super chats. Do not show in Negla Ross James. A measure man said, let's be real. Tough TV hasn't taken anything down where it started. Yet he was striking YouTubers discovery. He said he. Wait, what? Yet he was striking YouTubers. Y'all, I don't think that it was Larry. Uh, not Larry Reed. I don't think that TG Jakes was striking YouTubers because the emails that the strikes were coming from were from a Gmail account. I don't think that I think that um, whomever was striking just felt like the people who they were striking were saying very egregious things about TD Jakes. But I don't know if that was actually the powder's house that was striking people. I'm a straight shooter. I don't have nothing to gain or lose there. I don't think it was the powder house. Um, and he said he a straight top. Who said he a straight top? TD Jakes? Put it in the comments. You don't have to do another super chat. Um, but thank you guys for the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Negla says she don't want to see it no more I told you this one's going to be a little messy Anyway So yeah, do I believe Buddha? Yeah People have been hitting me up in my DMs um, Asking me if I'm going to interview him I've never spoken to Buddha Buddha has never reached out to me for an interview um, So I don't know Where that you know rumor came from But I to, At this point have never Been in contact with Buddha but let's move on to somebody who decided that it was time to confirm some of the things that Buddha had said. And that would be Craig the writer. Now, what's interesting about Craig the writer is basically the allegation is due to Larry Reed and Buddha, they broke up the Queen Supreme Court with Kaya and T.S. Madison which happened to be my favorite YouTube show. If y'all were watching that live, I was in that chat too. <laughs> I loved Kaya and T.S. Madison. I loved it every time they called Trina Sourpuss. I, I loved Kaya and T.S. Madison. I thought they had something special. You couldn't really bottle what they had. And although, you know, both have still gone on to do their own YouTube channel and stuff in their own right, for me, the Queen's Court goes down in history, YouTube history as one of the best shows that ever popped off. Definitely a big fan of Kaya and T.S. Madison. I'll probably try to get uh, Kaya to perform at my next birthday party. <laughs> but anyway, yes, yeah, so Craig the Writer, who was there, not only is confirming Buddha's story, but he's alleging that Buddha and Larry Reed were the reason that the Queen's, the Queen's Court crumbled. Let me see, where is it? Here we go. Get out of here today and do it. Um, and maybe I'll drag y'all along. No, I'm gonna do a separate video if I go check the PLS. But at any rate, because I want this video to be just about this. But here's the thing. Um, I've known this stuff for years because, like I said, Vincent and I have talked about it. We sat down in that basement getting ready for the Monday night show, and we talked about all of this stuff. He confided. So when I was looking at his video last night, and I see these people in the comments talking about, well, we don't believe it, and we not. But oh. if you think about what Vincent said, if you if you watch the video, if you think. Okay, uh, 
Mr. D-Boy Sexy said, that wasn't why they broke up, just for clarity. It was way more than that, Mims. No, I'm sure that there were a lot of inner working issues. Um, Maddie had more of the business sense. Kyle was more of, I, I wouldn't say the personality, because Maddie has personality. But um, if I remember correctly, Maddie, uh, Kaya did not like the fact that they were doing the Queen Supreme Court in the basement where Maddie used to make her movies. Um, in addition, she said, get them punks out your business. And that was referencing Larry and Buddha. Um, for T.S. Madison, she felt it was a struggle working with Kaya because Kaya's business acumen really wasn't there. And although um, they were doing really well, T.S. Madison was really looking towards the future and being more innovative with what YouTube could be. Kaya seemed to be kind of okay where they were at. Madison was looking for sponsorship. So you, uh, Mr. Deep Boy Sexy, you must be a fan like me because I remember all this. Like my my world crumble when uh, when that show went off because I used to be there every time Christmas would roll around and she was giving Sourpuss some feminine hygiene products. <laughs> 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 okay um so let's get back to it i told you this one was gonna be a little uh <laughs> it's gonna be a little messy they said oh they said td is a power bottom not a topper you know i don't know what that man likes hopefully he likes his wife hopefully he likes his wife we'll leave it at that <laughs> Yo, we got like almost three thousand in the chat I don't know where we are on likes. What's up, AT2? Monique was a special guest on the show, so it was all kind of ironic. Yeah, Monique, the last time Kaya and T.S. Madison were together, Monique was supposed to be the guest, and they had Monique looking confused. Like, what, what is going on? <laughs> uh, okay, so let's get back to Craig. About the things that he said, it's very reminiscent of what was said about Eddie Long. Vincent had text messages in that video. Remember, he told us how to use uh, StreamYard and all this other shit. He had videos coming up. He had text messages coming up. He had audio files that you could hear. Larry and I, we're fine. He bought my first book. But the truth is the truth. I don't covet the truth. I don't covet the truth. I don't care who it is. I don't have anything against Larry. Personally. There were so many threads. There were so many threads. Like when I was listening to Vincent's story last night of what was being said about Eddie Long when that happened. And a lot of his parishioners didn't want to believe it. They didn't want to believe it. Oh, they, 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 so many people castigated those young boys. There were like six or seven, what was it, seven boys in that Eddie Long thing? There, and there were so many people who were so invested in believing Eddie Long that they castigated those little boys. And my thing is, only a couple of those boys knew each other directly. And so how is it that the other four or five of them had very similar stories that they didn't know each other? If they had never met, how was it that their stories were so similar? And Juanita Bynum, the other, we talking about men walking around these tight jeans and this, that, and the women walking around acting like men. In that same video that I showed at the, vid at the beginning of this, in that same live, Larry said how Juanita Bynum admits to being a former lesbian. It's always those that try to tear everybody else down in the community. And I'm not saying Donnie McClurkin tried to tear the gaze down, but Donnie McClurkin definitely tried to make y'all believe that he was not one of us. And so many others try to make believe that they're not one of us. Y'all don't learn to listen. And Craig is not to be played with. If you remember him from like Maddie in the Morning and stuff like that, he's extremely quick-witted. But like you said, he doesn't have anything to gain or lose in this scenario. And again, I'm not talking about everybody in here. I'm not, did you hear what Mike said? And I'm not talking about everybody in here, but y'all gonna learn to stop doubting me. When I say something on here, you better be listening. Cause and you know when I'm, listen, and I don't add no yeast to it. Not when it comes to stuff like this. Now, you know I'll add yeast to it if, it's, if I'm talking about something with me and Elliot or Jack, but when it comes to this kind of shit, I don't add no yeast. And I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to leave it alone. When I looked over there at Larry's live, he looked real small, like Eddie Long was looking. We 
which vitamins do I still need to take? You're truly, I can't wait to find my facial expressions during this video. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Craig, oh, Craig, wait, 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 wait. Larry is what? Oh, S T R A I G H T. Oh, I didn't know that. Me and <laughs> Craig, that was my name's answer. That was I went around for like two or three weeks. I mean, Listen, yeah. if, if y'all can respect me as she, respect him as he, goddammit. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I know, I know he's a he. <laughs> Craig, what you saying? <laughs> I know he's a he. I, I just. Larry, are you former LGBTQ, Larry? No, no, I'm not former <laughs> LGBTQ. I just found out about I Milan, really got Milan, educated. Milan. I really got educated through Madden. No, I'm well, not. Larry, let me ask you a question. Would you get your dick sucked by a man? Oh, somebody shoot me right now. <laughs> well, it's somebody. hard to say because I actually have. But I got to explain it. Oh, but I got to explain it. So not only had your dick sucked, but had your dick sucked. Let me explain. No, no, no. Hold on. Thank you for that. So we got 3,000 or over 3,000 people in here, but we don't even have 1,000 likes. Go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit that like button. So look, here's the question. So not only do you somebody right. man, but have you ever put your penis in a man? Yes, but let me explain. Oh, okay, but well, why you explain? I'm gonna go ahead and so you is or let our former LGBT. Look, after he's going to find out what's going on with Boosie. This is going to answer Boosie's question. He's going to find out what's going on with Boosie when he's explain. Let me explain. Madison can't stand Boosie. <laughs> when did you retire? Let me explain. Let me explain. Now, here's the thing. Craig is asking that question because Buddha has already informed him about this alleged relationship. Now... Is this messy? Yes, because now y'all are all co-workers. And now Buddha is sharing the personal dealings between he and Larry Reed to this co-worker. So is it messy? Hell yes. This is messy as hell. So do I, again, do I believe everything that Buddha or Vincent had to say? I believe a lot of it, but I also believe that he is a scorn lover and that's the kind of stuff you do you don't like you didn't care that this was like a working relationship with these people as you heard him say buddha vincent was actually the person who helped set them up to have like better um better cameras and all that kind of stuff vincent knows his stuff if you watched his video you know that he's good at editing but you know two things can be true at the same time he could be a whistleblower and he could also still be um, scorned. That's why I'm like, it doesn't really move the needle. Larry is going to, Larry has not lost his subscribership. So then you have to ask yourself, what else is there to benefit from it? I have followed the platform, know my entire story. I've been very open about it. Well, well come on, they don't know your story. We open up. Yeah, we open up. Yeah. From early, um, somebody said, "Why tag TD Jakes in this?" Uh, the first half of the video was about TD Jakes. As I can remember, and I've said this on the, how many interviews. Oh, the earliest thing the I first half of the video was about TD Jakes. The second half is basically talking about what's going on with the man who exposed T.G. Jakes in a different way through Prophet Manasa about a month ago. So it all ties in. Remember, as a child, the first thought is the smell of another man's crotch. Oh, because oh. I, was, what? I was consistently and repeatedly mm -hmm. now, and, and I- You don't need no more lawsuits. <laughs> and I, mean, I, I was able to- I was then to his question. And were the times that you performed for late- All of that. So what? And it may now that I think about it, it may have something to do with sort of what I'm doing now. I'm gonna send you my. I'm okay. So, um, for those of you guys who don't know, Larry has been very open that he was taken advantage of as a child. Um, so that's really what he shared. Milan Christopher's response to that got him in a hell of a lot of trouble. I'm gonna go ahead and send you my toys anyway. Milan Christopher sells adult toys made out of his 
Uh, where his booty butter is created <laughs> uh, and his peace. So somebody is telling you about what happened to them where they were taken advantage of as a child and you finish that with, I'm going to send you some of my toys. <laughs> side note craig was also a meme you've probably seen craig as a meme somewhere in the last few years because of things like what he's doing right now <laughs> He's a fool for this. We get it, Craig. We get it. Get my Vikings. He's so shady. A bit of water right now. Let's come to the heart health. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for the food we're about to receive. Let it be for the nourishment. Clear my throat so I can get into this. Because, see, some of you who be questioning the powers of my knowledge. Michael, Mike, Rita is still smoking Benson and Hedges. Wait a minute, let me explain something to y'all. And this ain't for everybody. You all can listen, but this ain't for everybody. This is just for the people who be thinking that I don't be knowing what I'm talking about. I done told y'all plenty of times before, I don't put my mouth on the children unless I know what I'm talking about. I don't put my mouth on the children unless I know what I am talking about. That little clip that you just saw, that little clip that you just saw, this is where this meme came from. Have you all seen this meme of me before? I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of blurred. Hey, do you see me sitting there looking? And I say, oh, child, and I get up and I walk away. And this one right here, as he was talking, I was reading a copy of my book, Book of Jewels. And when he said that nonsense, I said, oh, child, and I got up and I walked away. Somebody create, Kayla created these two memes from that live. So y'all know I try to be so, fair around here. So Craig is confirming what Buddha said. Conscious TV um, had a recorded call and he's, in my opinion, basically alleging that Buddha is in serious financial trouble, um, basically was homeless at one point, and he's looking just for financial gain. That's just to give you all the other side of this, where Craig is defending, or not defending Buddha, but saying Buddha had established this timeline for him years ago. Conscious is alleging that Buddha probably should have come back into the mix because he's facing some severe financial issues. I told y'all this was met, this was a lot. During that conversation, some of you, and I don't know who you are, some of you tried to attack me in Milan because you said that we were being insensitive because he was talking to us about being molested and we would that was just a shame. You were disappointed in me, especially you expect that from Milan, but you just was you just didn't believe that I would just be on there making fun of somebody who was molested. And I was like, baby doll, I'm not making fun of this man being molested. I wasn't making fun of him being molested. And they're like, oh, I'm just so disappointed. I can't believe that you would be he is opening a grown man and you've never put your penis in a grown man. Okay, so when I first met Madison. It was like 2017. I've known Madison about seven years, right? Steve and Kaya were working together. And Madison had the vision and wanted to go, wanted to take it so that the show, that the lives looked just like a TV show. So I really do believe that what we were doing and what she envisioned, what Madison envisioned, was creating what we see now. Where you look at web show, like people doing live shows and stuff like that, live streaming things. The reason why it looks so visually appealing is because I believe, and it's, this is just me, nobody was doing live shows like we were doing. And again, I'm giving Madison the credit because she had the vision. Because when they when she and Kyle were first doing live streams, they had laptops, right? Let me put this down. We've got information on it. Not laptops. They had iPads. 
she they had an iPad and it was on a tripod. And when they would advertise the crayon case or different products, the shit would be it, it, it would be in the reverse. You see how you can read this and you know what it says? Well, on the iPad, it was in reverse. It was backwards. I remember so that. she started filming with the camera. She started filming with the camera. So she had the vision to do a camera. And Kaya was resistant to that. Girl, let's just get on here and just do the right manager. Like, no, sis, let's just let's get some cameras and da-da-da-da. So she ended up getting cameras. But in addition to getting cameras, she brought in Vincent and Larry because we started using a streaming service that allowed us to broadcast on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope. Y'all remember Periscope? And Twitter. Simultaneously. And so Madison had that vision. And what I'm telling you is, I'm not saying that there was nobody else out there doing it. But what I'm telling you is, she was definitely one of the first. And, and she created it to make it look like a show. Right? So now you got everybody that's on StreamYard and they're streaming and, and they're able to put assets up on the screen, like video and pictures, where before everybody was doing like this, showing you the product. Now we can put it up in the system and you see it. And that, it's just more professional, right? Well, Kaya was resistant. Well, girl, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Da, da, da. Well, Madison brought in Vincent and Larry. Larry, I mean, Larry was just there. But Vincent was the one that told Madison and was teaching me how to run the system. So then Madison hired Vincent. Vincent trained Mo. That's how we met Mo. I don't think y'all hear me. We listening? I hate when people stop a story. <laughs> y'all ain't listening. So what happened was I was working with Vincent directly. And so I would say, Vincent, this is the story that we're doing. Here are the assets. Here are the videos. Here are the pictures. We're doing this one first. Then we're going to go to this one. Then we're going to go to this one. Then we're going to go to like, Vincent was running the production, but I was running the show. So at this point, Kaya, when she said, keep them punks out your house, she was talking about Vincent and Larry. She was talking about Vincent and Larry. When Kaya said, keep them punks out, that's what she was talking about. So, fast forward, Kaya leaves, and now it's just me and Madison doing the show, right? We're just running the show. I'm running the show, and, you know, and Madison and I are putting our heads together, trying to figure out who the new judge is going to be every week, because Kaya was gone. So, Vincent became a part of the show. So, when we started traveling, when I finally convinced Madison to take the show on the road, Vincent would fly with us, Right? And we would do the show in different cities and then we come back here. Well, after about a year and some change, Vincent got tired of doing it. Hold on. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Mona, you know Terrence Dean? <laughs> Say what now? <laughs> Mona, do you mean you know him in the biblical sense like he's your brother? Or Mona, put in the chat if you know him personally. Y'all, she's talking about this book, Hiding in Hip Hop, that we read some... Uh, Mona, hit me up on Instagram, make it make sense now. Or you can email me at make it make dot sense at yahoo.com. I want to talk to you. I might even drop the link just for Mona if Mona wants to come up. Let me know, Mona. Okay, let me know. I, if Mona wants to come up, she's more than welcome to come up. But if not, DM me, Mona. We should talk. Because that book was, that book was, he exposed a lot of stuff in that book. <laughs> okay, let's get back. He got tired of traveling. It was just a lot, right? And Vincent had a full-time job. So it was a lot. Did I say good day thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers? I'm crazy right to do it. This is the face. The link is only for Mona if she chooses to come up. These are my thoughts in my voice on black shit, white shit, gay shit, and everything in between. And so for a period, Larry would come around because Vincent was still trying to set up the system. And so what happened was when when, when we interviewed Monique that night that Kaya left, the system was new and the system was stalling and there was a delay and shit like that. So Kaya got up and she left. DB, no. We were just trying to integrate the system and we were trying to figure it out. So there were a lot of kinks in it still. Well, Larry would still come around in the beginning. And Larry used to flirt with me. 
And I'm like, Larry, go on somewhere. And, um, and please believe I have receipts on that too, so don't try me. At any rate, Michael in New York, if you know what I'm talking about, when I say receipts, you know what I'm talking about. So at any rate, so Larry is finally gone. Okay, so um, the people we're talking about are Larry Reed, who basically, you know, let us know or allege that T.G. Jakes was trying to groom another pastor. Um, what's ha what has happened in like the last couple of weeks is people have been coming out of the woodwork to expose him, um, mostly about his sexuality, but the rest are, exp are one of them exposed that he was allegedly stealing from the church. We haven't seen any receipts yet, but that's what we're talking about. And it's just us working, me, Vincent, and Madison, right? This guy was one of Kaya's, I mean, T.S. Madison's partners on the Queen's Court. He basically is saying that the person who exposed Larry is telling the truth because he had told him the same story umpteenth years ago. What's weird is that Vincent told him this all these years ago when he, they were working with T.S. Madison and stuff, but... You went back to work for Larry. That's crazy. Um, Nisha1833 says, bottomless lunchtime tea. Booty, <laughs> Booty Butter says, you think T.D. Jake sings palms while on his palms? I don't know. Maybe maybe he's doing push-ups and singing palms. I'm sure that's what you meant, Booty Butter. Um, Nisha says, Larry is a stunt queen. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but y'all know i like to give both sides of the story i hope i've been doing that vincent used to confide in me because he and i were downstairs in the basement working together he shared with me then and i'm only sharing with you now because vincent has already done all of this last night on the live vincent shared with me then in 2017 nieces and nephews and when i tell you he told me then that he was heartbroken because he found out, and Vincent moved out of the house that Larry was living in, that he was living in with Larry. Larry was Larry was married at the time. Vincent moved out of the house because he shared with me that he found out that Larry was having sex with four and five different people. And But Vincent, at the time, wasn't as comfortable in his skin as a gay man at the time. So he wasn't going to come out and share this information. He's clear about who he is now. And so... I knew all of this stuff for years. And so when I said to you guys on. I don't know if I'm in the middle. I, I might believe you, but I will give the other person side so that y'all can decide who y'all believe. But I believed what Buddha was saying. <laughs> I just didn't see any facts about Larry stealing, but all the other stuff. I believed him. I think that what has happened is. Excuse me, Larry. People equate Larry with like the Wendy Williams of the world. So because Larry is very boombastic when it comes to like his wealth and because, as you guys have told me, um, Larry has exposed people, including this T.D. Jakes thing. People feel like this is like karma coming back to kick him in the ass. That's what I've been hearing in the street. Um you have people who feel like, damn, you know, Wendy's demise, I loved her. But then you have people who remember that Wendy was out here ruining lives. We didn't need to know that you bathed Method Man, but you wanted his wife to know. <laughs> so that's what I feel is happening now. Some people feel Larry's getting his, like, comeuppance. Other people feel like, leave him alone. Um, nothing that was said will make them waver from who they feel larry is to them that live that i just showed you guys at the beginning of this picture at the beginning of this live i've also said many times like it's interesting to me how larry gets on his platform and he talks about all of these people td jakes the kirk franklins and the donnie mcclurkins and the, the the wall family those of you who know the wall family it's a gospel group but one of the guys is gay and he's been out here messing around and he's got caught having sex videos and shit all out but he gets on larry gets on his platform and talks about all of these people and I'm like, sir, sir, you got the unmitigated goal 
to be that would be like me talking about all these all people right, and, and, and y'all don't know that I'm a homosexual. Like, what? And look, I even had a conversation with, with one of my former followers. One of my former followers, I said to her last night, I said, you know, your favorite thing got exposed. She stopped following me several years ago. We still cool. And I still love her just the same. But she stopped following me years ago. And I used to see her over in his lives. I would see her comments. I don't watch his lives. I never did because I just didn't think he was interesting. Is that coming out this weekend? I will watch And I just that. wasn't buying the foolishness. I wasn't sipping the Kool-Aid. I wasn't drinking the Kool-Aid. You know, I, it just didn't feel authentic to me. So I just never watched the stuff. But I would see her comments down there sometimes. Um, I will if the Wendy stuff is coming out this weekend, I will definitely uh be watching that. Maybe we'll do open panel on it if it's some crazy stuff that comes out. Let's get into the other content creators. Y'all, being in these chats is like Game of Thrones. You got people over here throwing bows, you got people angry, you got people making accusations. They have thrown out just about everybody who's been associated on either side. We got Tasha K interviewing Larry's alleged um, employee slash lover that drops today. Um, we have another content creator, King Payne, who has interviewed like five different people that in, that have made allegations about Larry. You have Tasha K a couple years ago interviewing a young man who alleged that he was taken advantage of by Larry while he was underage. Larry went ahead and sued him in court um for those allegations and maintains that he's never been with anybody underage then you got like um i don't know why larry and tasha fell out if i remember correctly larry feels like he fell out with tasha because tasha was using him to get information on how to really make your patreon pop Larry, I think, makes about $100,000 a month from Patreon alone. I believe that was the number that they gave. and But how they fell out, I don't know. But after you interview somebody who has that type of allegation about me, there's no coming back. Then you got um, the other content creators who really don't play any part in it. Conscious TV is a mentee to Larry, but now all these crazy rumors are being thrown out about him. Um then you have content creators who feel like, um, who was it? Everybody who sided with Larry against Tasha K should now be making content about Larry. This shit is crazy. We got the one content creator who then went to jail for allegedly stalking. We got Larry getting exposed while also exposing TD Jakes. This is the hell of a lot, y'all. Like, this is a hell of a lot of shit. Like, <laughs> I told you. <laughs> but um, you got something. If, you, if y'all are the reason that the Queen Supreme Court broke up, yeah, we're going to be windmilling. Just kidding. Um, y'all. <laughs> Who went to jail? Infamous Sylvia. She reports on um, a lot of the Shirley Strawberry stuff. The um, Was it YSL? The Rico case, a big time Rico case. Y'all. Y'all. Me, but I gotta tell you, these hoes ain't loyal. You <laughs> and on that note, uh, we gotta go. We got 3,500 in the chat. Definitely hit that like button. I appreciate you guys being here. If you are new, to the um, channel, go ahead and subscribe. I gotta go. Have a good day, y'all. I'm. I don't even know what this comment section of this video is about to be like. <laughs> I don't know. And also, shout out to the lady who kind of read me last night on my live. Um, she said I hadn't responded to her message. So actively the day I've been going through my messages on in my DMs, I had a. I have a lot. Um, and trying to respond to everybody. If you just send me a video, I'm not going to open it because that could be spam or, you know, somebody trying to attack your computer. So if you send me a video or something, just make sure to tell me what the video is actually of so I feel like it's safe to open. But I do try to answer. I try to be a different kind of content creator. I do try to, like, connect with you guys outside of just this. So have a good day. Uh, y'all get to work. I know y'all haven't been working like you should. <laughs> Bye, y'all.